coffee for one. It's quite a lot. <laughs> you're here welcome back my friends if you are new here hello welcome my name is Fatima I am a 29 year old millennial living in the beautiful desert of Las Vegas Nevada with my husband and our four kid cats and today we're going to spend the perfect fall evening together originally I wanted to do the perfect fall day together but I had a lot of catching up to do with my content. I've been doing a really good job with short form content and I have so many ideas and drafts already in the works. I actually wanted to keep going and I wanted to just keep working all day today on my content and I wanted to push out another short today. But you know what? I got really tired. <laughs> like my back is just ah uh, and my head is just I don't know. I really needed to step away from my laptop and just enjoy my perfect fall evening. So that's why I can't really do a perfect fall day today. So we're going to do a perfect fall evening. The first thing that I want to do, I haven't had anything to eat and it's almost going to be five. I woke up really late. That's a common thing here if you're new. I sleep in on my days off i do not wake up early because on my work days i have to be awake by like 6 45 to start work at 7 a.m and i mean i work from home so i could start work at 7 a.m but i really don't like to do that i like to get up really recoup wake up and start working so on my days off i sleep in because i stay up late at night <laughs> Sometimes reading, sometimes editing, sometimes just playing on my Nintendo. <laughs> but today we're gonna just relax. We're gonna relax for the rest of the evening. I am gonna try my best to not edit content, but obviously I'm creating content. If I need to create content for a short form format, I will. But other than that, we are going to relax. And as you guys can see, I'm still in my PJs. I am in my Halloween PJs. Absolutely loving them. I got these at Walmart and they were on sale. They were pretty cheap. They were like 10 something. So that was a good deal. And they're super comfy. And I also have my little slippers. So I've already missed, kinda missed my coffee hour. I bought decaf coffee though. So we're gonna make some decaf coffee because I just love the taste of coffee. I'm gonna fill up my flask because I'm very thirsty. And I think we're gonna eat a little bit of a banana bread muffin. I made some banana bread muffins the other day with chocolate chip and pieces of the peanut butter Reese's cup just chopped up into the muffins and they're, they came out so delicious. So we're gonna get a muffin because I've already gone so many hours without eating food. I think I'm just gonna wait till dinner to eat because honestly, I'm not hungry. That's another thing too. I don't really eat breakfast. I don't have my first meal until like 3 p.m. I guess like I fast but unintentionally. Anyways, this is becoming a little too chit chatty of an intro so let's go make a coffee. Yeah. This is the decaf coffee I'm going to be making today. It's from a coffee shop here in Vegas called Two Slidgeors. They actually have multiple locations in different places in the United States. There's one five minutes away from my father-in-law's house and when I went for the first time, I was obsessed. Their coffee is so good. It's just they here in Vegas, they're about 25 minutes away from me, so they're pretty far. I went with my friend yesterday. We had a little coffee date, and I wanted us to go to two, two slidgeors, and I was gonna take her, but she decided she wanted to drive us there. I was really, really thankful that she drove us there, but I decided to buy some coffee while I was there. I also bought Dylan a donut. It was really, really, well, actually, I don't know if it was delicious, but it looked delicious. I bought some food myself. I bought a cheesecake. My friend and I shared a little treat together. And then we each got some like Frank sweet hot dogs in like sweet bread. 
and it was perfect. It was delicious. And it was a really great coffee date. We were there for a long time. We were there for like four hours just catching up, talking. And I'm gonna miss her so much because she's gonna be leaving me to DC but I'm gonna be able to visit her in DC, so I guess that's a win-win. Anyways, let's make some coffee. I highly recommend if you're ever in Vegas to stop by Tours Le Jour. They have the most delicious coffee ever. Try their cold brews. Their cold brews are so, so good. We're gonna do some cinnamon bun creamer from Trader Joe's. I really like this one. It's such a good holiday taste. A little really goes a long way with this some milk. Cannot forget water. Cannot forget water. Oh, that's so good. I was so thirsty. I was very, very thirsty. Coffee for one. It's got a little snack now. Um, so I'm gonna do one muffin. So banana muffin and a little um, milk bun that I got at Tours Le Jour. I got this little milk bun and I got bread too, but it's a very little bread. So we're all actually almost done with it. I think there's like two pieces left. I've lost all sunlight, but it's okay. I had to take a break from reading and turn on my light because it started to get really difficult to read. Um, so I was using my iPhone light for a bit until it started to get really hot. And then I realized maybe this is a good idea. I should probably buy a book light or something. Anyways, I started reading this book. It's a really short story. I can probably even finish this today, but I'm not gonna finish it today because I get what I call book jitters, where basically if I'm reading a book too much, it's not that I get bored, it's just it's just like a me, me issue because I know I don't get bored. I know that I'm enjoying this book. If I really wasn't enjoying this book, I would have no problem putting it down and not finishing it. But this happens with every book that I'm reading. Even when I was reading Akotar, I had this issue where I'm reading and I'm just reading for so long and I think it's because I'm staying still in place for a very long time that I get literal jitters. I just want to get up, go do other things. So as I'm reading, I'm not really paying attention to the words that I'm reading. I don't know if that makes sense. I don't know if anybody else deals with that, but I do. So I had to put the book down after I got to like chapter four. But so far, I really, really like this book. Hello! Hi, come here. You like this type of blanket. So this book follows Harper Coleman, who is 28 years old, and she recently got out of a relationship from her cheating ex-fiance. Fortunately, cheated on her with her roommate. But not only that, she also had to take over, well, not had to, she decided she wanted to take over her grandmother's bookshop, which is called Whispering Pages. Super cute how they're connecting the names to the bookshop. Harper grew up in this bookshop. She would go every summer and she wanted to take over the bookshop. She wasn't gonna just let it go to waste. But unfortunately, a body is found in the shelves of her bookshop. So now she's stuck in between not only mourning for her grandmother, but learning the ropes of the business and trying to solve a mystery in which she is the prime suspect. Uh, not only that, but there's also like other characters that are involved in the story, such as two brothers that are working next to her and they're apparently really good looking, but the more she digs into this mystery, the more that she starts to learn about the two brothers. So I don't wanna give off too much about this book, but I finished the fourth chapter already and it's pretty good. It's just, like I said, I started getting book jitters and then somebody came to pick up an item from Facebook Marketplace, so I made $10. My goal was to make $30 this month on Facebook Marketplace, so I'm really happy. I made $10, so we just have 20 more dollars to go. I just need to post a couple of things. I'll probably do that to nap tomorrow because we're still gonna keep going with my cozy 
my my cat is misbehaving right now <laughs> but we're still gonna keep going with my cozy fall evening so i'm gonna take a break from reading i'll probably finish this book tomorrow actually i'll more than likely finish this book tomorrow i figured that i'll show you guys all the books that i'm gonna be reading for the rest of this month i normally like to go to the library and check out books so that i don't have to buy them but i ended up buying all these because i had a really really hard time um getting all of them and i wanted to be able to have them all in the month of october but i also didn't want to hog them so i ended up buying them but i also did some detailed research on all of the books because i wanted to make sure that if i'm spending my money on them i am gonna enjoy them if you want to skip all this that's perfectly fine by me because I think the rest of them are not going to be cozy. I think the only semi cozy books are this one and maybe this one. The next book that I'm going to be reading this October is The Boyfriend by Frida McFadden. So this book I had been looking at it for quite some time. I actually just recently got it but I have seen so many people read this book and at first I was like Man, another ex-boyfriend boyfriend book to add to my list. I think I'm good. I don't think I'm gonna do any more. <laughs> but one of my favorite Instagram financial influencers finished reading this book and I had to reach out to her and ask her about like a short summary and what she thought and she had nothing but great things to say so when I saw it at Costco I decided to buy it because it was a little bit cheaper and I thought that's perfect let's get it today and we're gonna get started on this book. So The Boyfriend by Frida McFadden is a psychological thriller centered around the complicated and susp suspenseful relationship between a young woman and her boyfriend. The book dives into themes of trust, deception, manipula manipulation, and twists and turns as she attempts to uncover the truth about her boyfriend. And basically the book explores the dangers of love when things just don't seem right and don't seem what they are. So I'm really excited to read this. This is going to be a really good book. I am a sucker for psychological thrillers. I really, really like psychological thrillers. I'm actually part of a Facebook group for psychological thriller books and all some of the books on there are really heavy. I for sure cannot read some of them, but the non too heavy ones I think I can deal with. And I would say that this book is a, a little bit of a non too heavy book. So I made sure to look into it. And then there are other other thr thrillers that I'm actually interested in reading from Frida McFadden, The Teacher and The Coworker. So those are other two books that I've been eyeing and I'm thinking about picking them up. If I can finish all these before the end of October, I'm definitely going to get The Coworker next. The next book that I'm going to be reading is Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell. This book follows, uh, I believe her name is Laurel, and she's a mother who is struggling with the disappearance of her teenage daughter Ellie, who vanished without a trace a decade earlier. Her life has been in turmoil she's been having a really hard time with the death of her daughter but her life starts to pick up when she meets Floyd who is a very charming man <laughs> we can see a pattern here as a relationship develops Laurel meets Floyd's nine-year-old daughter Poppy who has a huge resemblance to Ellie and this basically sparks a light in Laurel to start to look for her daughter again and figure out what happened to her daughter. Some of the themes the novel explores are grief, obsession, and just how far somebody is willing to go to find the truth. And I think it's fair to say this is her daughter so if I had lost my daughter out of nowhere I would go to the end of the world to figure out what happened to my daughter. Although this is also another psychological thriller, it's definitely a lot more different than The Boyfriend, where The Boyfriend is an actual relationship book between a man and a woman. This one's between a mom and her daughter and her trying to find out the truth about what happened to her daughter. I'm looking forward to reading this one. The reason why I picked up this one was because I picked up this one. This one is called The Chain and I have been wanting to read The Chain for such a long time. I just I don't know. I don't know why. Or you know what? I do know. It's because I've been stuck in my fantasy reading for such a long time. So I've just been 
putting to the side a lot of my TBR psychological thriller books and I've been prioritizing a lot of my fantasy books. So it's a mother whose daughter is kidnapped but this is a scheme, it's like a kidnapping scheme where she's abducted by strangers who inform her that in order to secure her child's release she has to kidnap another child and it's basically a chain that goes on and on and on. So it forces every parent to become a victim and a perp perpetrator in the never ending cycle of the chain. Part of me really wants to read it and part of me really doesn't but I don't know the whole thought of it being a kidnapping scheme is what definitely gravitates me towards wanting to read the book. So some of the themes of this book are desperation as well as love and the lengths a parent will go for their child, what they're willing to do for their children and basically being forced to commit a crime in order to survive. Yeah. So I felt like it's a perfect read for October. <laughs> Maybe I should be starting off with these books first before I start off with my least heavy like murder mystery <laughs> books. I'm starting to rethink my decisions at the moment. The next book that I'm going to be reading is called Hidden Pictures by Jason Rikulak. And this book is a supernatural thriller that follows Mallory, who is a young girl that just recently um, got better from an addiction problem. She takes up a job as a nanny and she starts taking care of a little boy named Teddy who loves to draw. They start to form a bond together and Mallory begins to realize that he's drawing some very dark drawings like a woman getting dragged into the woods. Eventually Mallory starts to connect the drawings that Teddy is making to a decade old crime. Mallory seeks to uncover the truths of these images that Teddy is drawing and how they are connected to the crime. Some of the themes in this book are trauma, redemption, and of course the supernatural. So this is another really exciting spooky read for the month of October. Last Last but not least, this isn't really a book that I'm going to be completing. It's more going to be a mood read. It's Grimm's Complete Fairy Tales. I really like fairy tales. They're really fun to read and this is actually the Grimm Brother Fairy Tales and this was at Costco and it was such a good deal. So I'm just going to be mood reading this whenever I feel like it. I don't plan on finishing it. But yeah, those are gonna be all the reads for the month of October. When I finish reading them, I'll come back and I'll give you guys my review. I'll give you guys more of a summary and just what I felt throughout the whole reading process of all these books. It's quite a lot. <laughs> I got these slate cloths. I don't know how you call them, <laughs> tablecloths? Anyways, I got them on Amazon. They were actually on sale for like $6 and the quality is pretty thin, but I've already used this one, I think, and I washed it. The line is still not coming out. I think I need to do another wash on them and then probably do it like high heat. It said that I could do it high heat. And when I spilled on it, I actually spilled red on it. It didn't go through. It actually kept the island pretty clean. And it, they wash really well too. Look at this one. They're definitely not cute spooky, but <laughs> I really like them. They're more like horror spooky. <laughs> Time for some dinner. I'm really hungry. I think I'm going to make some chicken gnocchi pasta and I don't know yeah chicken gnocchi pasta I have some holiday pasta that I've been wanting to use like spooky pasta for October but I think I'm gonna wait till next week or maybe wait till my twilight party I don't know if I told you guys but we're gonna be having a twilight party on the 26th and I've already started preparations uh, we're gonna be playing twilight bingo twilight scene it like a paint and sip little twilight moment like an hour maybe 30 minutes to like 40 minutes long paint and sip and I'm gonna be the host and I'm also gonna be dressed up. Everybody needs to be dressed up. That's their ticket in the door. But yeah, I've already started preparations for that. That's on the 26th, so that's coming up in two weeks. So maybe I'll just save the pasta for that day. But for right now, I'm hungry, so I'm gonna make some gnocchi. 
And I have the pumpkin Trader Joe's gnocchi. It's really dark in here. There we go, that's, that's better. So, let me show you guys. Joe's gnocchi. So it says it expired on the 6th. I'm gonna open it and if it's not smelly, I'm still gonna make it because it's only a couple of days. And I'm gonna make chicken. So, gnocchi. And then some chicken breast. Chicken breast. And we're gonna make some pasta. So I think I'm gonna do... <gasps> Ooh, I've been wanting to try this one. I'm gonna try... This guy from Trader Joe's. It's the Calabrian Chili Spicy Pasta Sauce. Let's give this a try. And then, I don't know, like pasta is just my cozy food. It's my comfort food. I love pasta. And it's also really easy. And then later tonight, we can do some hot chocolate to end the cozy night while I do some diamond painting. I think maybe Dylan would want to do some diamond painting too with me. I don't think he'll be too busy later on. I was thinking about also making some cookies tonight, but I'm not really craving them. I already had my sweet treat earlier today, so... I don't think I'm gonna be doing that. Maybe I'll just do some cheese and crackers. I have some delicious onion goat cheese that I got from Trader Joe's guy right here. And it's so good. I bought a couple extra because they had a summer one. It was like raspberry goat cheese or something like that. And I only got, I got it twice and they sold out. So I thought they were gonna sell out, so I bought three. But every time I go, I still see it. So I'm gonna wait till I'm done with the this this one and the last one. I bought two. I have two extra, so I bought three. Um, and then I'm gonna restock. But goat cheese freezes well, for those that don't know. You can freeze goat cheese for up to like six months. All right, let's make some chicken gnocchi. Well, let's first make sure the gnocchi is good. <laughs> really really good and all that I added was some um, garlic powder, black pepper, and pink Himalayan salt and it's already smelling really really good and I use butter for really the majority of the things that I'm cooking unless a recipe really calls for oil then I'll use um, olive oil. I like using the extra filtered olive oil. I get a couple of those from Costco uh, once a year I just buy them in bulk and they last me throughout the whole year until I need to buy more later on. But I'm excited to eat. This is going to be so delicious. Usually Dylan cooks for me. Um, that's just our agreement. Uh, the only thing though that I have a hard time with him helping out is with the laundry. Because I like the laundry done a specific way. And I don't know, I'm a little... I'm a little weird when it comes to the laundry. But um, I'm gonna let this cook a little bit more until I don't see any more pink. And then we're gonna add in the pasta. And while the pasta is warming up on low, I'm gonna do the gnocchi. I should probably smell the gnocchi first to make sure that it is not smelly. Because it did say that it expired a couple of days ago, so let's check that first. Yeah, it smells fine. I think it's it's fine. <laughs> it doesn't smell weird or anything, so I'm gonna use it. And then we'll know tomorrow if I get sick. tasted the gnocchi and some of the chicken. 
and it's so good. You really uh, can't taste a lot of the pumpkin gnocchi. Mm. Mm. Wow, this sauce is really good. Oh man, that's really good. My cats are going insane. Oh, this is really good. This came out super delicious. Gosh, I wish I had some Parmesan. Mm, I have some pizza cheese. So I think I might sprinkle a little bit of that on top. I don't have any parsley, so it's gonna be without parsley. But other than that, it came out really good. Yay for comfort food. And I think for a drink of choice, I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna do this guy. I'm gonna do my Trader Joe Beans green tea. I really love this one. And I'm put it in my ghost cup. Hi, sweetie. headlamp to do this activity because I could not see the letters. Some of them are really, really dark, so I'm wearing <laughs> an emergency headlamp. But it's working. It's perfect. So I'm going to keep doing this time of painting with my headlamp.